everyone, welcome back to Ellie Pops Fist Boat YouTube channel. So today I'm going to show you how to make one of these pinwheel bows. These are the ones that I do for my school bows. So I'm going to show you how to make one today. So what you're going to need is some 10 mil uh, gross grain ribbon in the colour of your choice and some 25 mil or one inch wide um, gross grain ribbon in the colour of your choice. Now I'm making navy ribbons today. So I have gone for uh, navy for the pinwheel, navy for the top and navy for the middle. You're also going to need alligator clips. For this size bow that I'm going to make, I use a 45 millimeter alligator tooth, tooth clip and we're not going to line it. Uh, you're going to need some cotton or thread or whatever you use to wrap or sew the bows up with. Depends if you want to sew the middle or just wrap them. I sew them, it's easier. I'll show you how to do that. Uh, some scissors to cut with. You're going to need also, uh, I use um, one of these to heat seal or you can use a lighter uh, and a glue gun. I'm also going to measure the ribbon today for you because I usually do this just by sight and the width of my hand and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second so I'll get my tape measure out so I can actually measure how much uh, ribbon we're going to use okay so what I do first of all I make sure I've got a nice neat edge on the end of this ribbon and then we're going to heat seal it And then what I do is I put the ribbon on the edge of my hand there. So it's just in line with the edge of my finger. Hold it with my thumb and I wrap it round once. And I'm just overlapping the edge of that other ribbon there. And I wrap it round twice. Again, just overwrapping it. Overlapping it, sorry. Now, what I'm doing, as you notice, is I've spread my fingers slightly. This is because when my fingers are together, they're narrower. So I'm just putting them out to try and make it square. And then what I do is find the end of my little finger and cut it there. Now, this is where I will measure for you because this is a piece of ribbon that we need. And it is roughly 49 centimeters long which is approximately 19 inches long now you can make these bigger if you want smaller if you want but i find like i say doing it the width of my hand makes it easier i don't usually measure at all and then i use the one that i've just cut to measure out Uh, more that I need so I need to do four of these for an order so that's three and that's four so I'm just going to cut that on there and that's four pieces of ribbon all the same length ready for my order. So I'm just going to set three to the side and that roll of ribbon. Now we want to make sure we heat seal both these ends. Gross grain does fray a lot and then we're going to wrap it back around our hands. So what we did, we had it on the edge of our finger there, wrap around once, slightly over overlapping by maybe five mil and again now what you want is for this end of the ribbon to be at the top of your hand and this end of the ribbon to be by your little finger and then just we grab it with our I call them scissor fingers we put one inside and one over the top and we grab it like this and then with my other scissor fingers, these three fingers underneath, this one on top, 
and I just flatten it out this time, making sure that either this is to the edge of this and this one's to the edge of here or the gap between the edge of that ribbon and that one starting and the edge of this ribbon and this one starting is the same. So that looks even. So I'm just pinching it all together there like that. And then what I do is scissor fingers again, this one underneath it, that one on top of it. And we're gonna fold it over so it's equal. Take your finger out and then press as hard as you can on this to make a crease and then pinching it you're going to open it out make sure you're holding on to all the ribbon and you let go again scissor fingers underneath and on top and we've got this line here that we're going to sew along so i get my thread which already has a knot in the end of it which is actually it's got knotted up on the table so i'm just going to get a clip to hold that you could also get a salon clip and do what I've just done and sew in between it if you're not very good at holding onto it while you're sewing. There we go. So a salon clip is a clip like this with a big loop and you can sew in the middle of it. I've been doing these for many years so I don't need that. So we're holding onto the whole thing. We've got our needle and thread with the knot already in the end and what we're going to do make sure these are all even they're all spread apart evenly and then we just where that crease is we tie a knot or sew a knot in the end of that thread and then we just sew in and out, making sure we grab all those layers as we go along and just sew in and out little stitches all the way to the end. And just like that, can you see how the needles sewn through it? And then we just pull that out. Can you see it's gone all the way through? Pull that out the other end. So like I say, oh, we've just done an in and out, just a normal stitch that's gone all the way through all layers. That's holding it together securely already. And then what we do is we just pull it. I usually pull it from the top and push down with my finger on the thread as we go. So we just push it down like this and then wrap round. So I'll do that again for you. So you've started at this end, you threaded it through, making sure they're all pushed in evenly. Pull it from the top and push down with your finger at the top as well. Push it into a concertina and just wrap it around a couple of times. Not too tight, but tight enough so that you get your shape. Make sure they're all the shape you, you, you like and then pull it tight. Tight as it'll go without your thread snapping. And then on the back, we just sew that on into a knot and then we can cut the rest of that off. Remember to re-knot your thread so next time you come to it, you can use it straight away. Okay, so then you're left with this pinwheel. This is called a pinwheel. I'll measure it for you. Never really measured these before. So it is approximately 10 centimetres, which is four, just short, it's about three and a half inches actually. About nine centimetres, about three and a 
Is that 10 centimeters? About nine centimeters. And then that's about three and a half inches. And that is your pinwheel bow. Now, to make this into a school bow, what you would do is either use a cost contrasting color of uh, school uniform. So this could have light blue, it could have red, it could have white, anything you want on top, whatever your school uniform color is. Or if you're using a patterned ribbon, a contrasting pattern or a plain ribbon with a pattern ribbon on top, you don't have to do them in school uniform colors. I've got some here that I did uh, just for a ballet class. And this one is going to just have navy on top. Now, what we do is we come back to your spool of ribbon and you lay this ribbon on top and you will, I suppose you could just measure it now because you know the measurements, but the width of the ribbon, we measure out a piece and then at this end we fold it in half And fold it in half again and that's where you know to cut and then you get this piece which is I'm guessing 18 centimeters yep which is around seven inches and we're going to need two of those so use the one that you've just cut to cut another one Again, heat seal these edges. Now, when I'm heat sealing, I am using the blue part of the flame. This is the hottest part and doesn't leave any black marks on your ribbon. And then what we're gonna do is fold this in half Pinch on the crease, open up, and on that crease, we're going to put a line of glue. And we're just going to make some miniature pinch bows. Like that. And then turn it over so your join is on the back. In the middle, you can sort of feel or see where that join is. You just put a little blob of glue in the middle and fold it in on itself. So you're folding lengthways and just let that uh, dry. And then on the folded piece on one side, you'll put another little blob of glue and fold that down to the middle. And then on the other side, where the other join is, put a little bubble glue on there and fold that down. So we've made a little pinch bow. I'm going to do another one of those. Fold it in half, crease along there, glue in that crease. Fold the two ends in on themselves. A bit of glue in the middle there on top. Pinch, that's why it's called a pinch bow. Pinching into the middle, like that. Then along the crease, another blob of glue. I have got some more tutorials on how to make pinch bows or tux bows as they're also called which is the same as a dicky bow and I'm sure I've got another tutorial on how to make these exact bows but for babies so the smaller versions I'll put some links to other videos in the description okay and then with the crease on top so it's got the sides folded upwards this way, that's the back, a 
and the sides folded downwards this way, that's the top. So with both of these bows with the sides folded downwards, we're gonna get one and we're gonna put a little bit of glue on the side, not the back or the top, but on the side, right in the middle. And then we're gonna just glue these two together. So I line them up like this and then just push in the middle. And just hold that while it dries. So then you have sort of a double pinch and then you get your pinwheel back and put some glue across the middle there and pop that on top and there you go that's your bow now what you can do which this customer hasn't requested this so i'm not going to but what you can do is this is a pinch bow that i've made and i've put some bling or some trim on the edges you can either do that on here or you can put them on this top layer this customer's just requested them like this so what i'm now going to do is get my alligator clip put some glue on the back like that and then turn these over and glue that clip to the back we're then going to get the 10 mil gross grain this can be a contrasting color or like i say this customer just wants plain blue bows so then what we're going to do is open the clip put some glue in the middle there and get this 10 mil make sure you've heat sealed the end and place that on the glue close the clip make sure that glue is pushing it down then we wrap that around the bow all the way around to the clip again and then I'm going to cut it the width of the, the clip and I'm going to heat seal that and glue it I'm going to glue it under the clip like that And there we go, a pinwheel bow. This is what I use for my school bows, but they're also pretty to use for everything else. Like I say, I've done one for a ballet class there. And you can also do this with a bobble and glue a bobble in the middle. You can put these on headbands. Lovely little three and a half inch clips. Now this customer has also requested a school logo on there. So let me see. So I have some 25 mil epoxy domes here. I have a lot of question about these. These are bottle cap domes. They're also called epoxy domes and these are 25 mil round ones. And then I have some images for the primary school and what I do is I just peel one of these epoxy domes off be careful not to touch the underneath you don't want any fingerprints on it you get your logo picture name whatever it is you wanting to use and you stick that to the bottom of the epoxy dome and you give it a real good rub make sure that all the image is stuck to the epoxy dome there's no air bubbles no muck no nothing in there and then you literally just glue put some glue in the middle of your bow and you glue that on there like that And there you go so why don't you give it a go pop me a comment below and let me know if you already make these what you do differently if there's anything you'd like to know um, no I can't tell you where to get the images from you can make them yourself or have a look around the internet um, the epoxy domes you can get for any bow craft shop or China I get these on China 
The ribbon obviously can get from anywhere, clips you can get from anywhere. But yeah, any questions, anything, please pop in the comments below. I've also got a YouTube, uh, Facebook group, which I will pop a link in the description. You can join that if you're not already. Give this a thumbs up if you liked it. Any sort of interaction is really good for the channel, so I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe or consider subscribing. I do try and upload videos as often as I can. And you can also request some tutorials if you're stuck on something or want to see something in the YouTube group on Facebook. So pop over there if you can, like and subscribe if you can, and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.